this web servlet at the beginning here, this at web servlet annotation marks the book list servlet and basically says it's going to handle this particular URI when the end user enters in the HTTP localhost 8080 slash bookstore slash book slash then it's going to access this book list servlet and again the inject is for CDI to inject the repository and then the do get method really just works with this request scope. Now scope is basically the life cycle of an object and Java E and circlets have many different scopes. They have page, request, conversation, session, application. So page scope is just within the JSP page. Request scope is just a request from the browser, a single request from the browser. Session scope is usually where you store information about the current user or about that current user session and that usually lasts between 5 and 90 minutes. Conversation scope is around some subset of the session, usually a single workflow like a user registration form or a shopping cart, and that would be around less time than a session. An application scope is going to be around as soon as you deploy and start that web application until it shuts down, application scope is going to be around. So that last object that we put into the book repository, we put into our application scope, that's going to be around for quite a while. But the books that we want to display on the request were only around for that particular request. So different scopes basically mean different life cycles, how long the log object's going to live and where it sort of lives in the uh, servlet world. Uh, the background on JSP. JSPs are also servlets. JSP is a templating language to define servlets that allows you to focus on the HTML instead of the Java code. It's like a uh, servlet turned inside out. It actually becomes a servlet. The container turns it into a servlet and it gets translated and compiled pretty quick once it's running. It doesn't have to be interpreted. JSP is similar to ASP and PHP in concept and scope. ASP predates JSP and early JSP and ASP use a lot of the same concepts. So if you are familiar with ASP or PHP really, a lot of the concepts in JSP will be very similar. Sort of like their cousins, if you will. JSP scriptlets versus servlets. The short version of this is when JSP first came out, Java scriptlets seemed like a good idea. Turns out you can make pages that are very hard to modify and change. Things like model to and templating help to do a better division of work so that you have pages that are more maintainable. Even though scriptlets exist and you can mix Java right in a JSP page, it's not recommended. So we're going to use the JSTL and Unified EL, which make JSP uh, work a little bit more like PHP Smarty or FreeMarker or Velocity. And if you're familiar with those, those are templating engines where you can't just mix in uh, programming language uh, directly into it. So it's a simplified view logic, but powerful enough. So when you want to create a JSP page, if you're using Eclipse, you just go to the area that you want to create the JSP page, you right click that and you create the JSP page. Uh, this first JSP page, we're using JSTL. We use the for each to iterate over the books. This, these books are the books that were passed in by the servlet. And this book is the current variable of this iteration. And you can basically print out the title, the description, the price, and the publication date. Now, if you're not familiar with HTML, just take our word for it, cut and paste, and get an idea, feel for it. Or you could spend some time and, and go to the HTML tutorial, for example, on the table a tag and learn about that and then come back. We don't really cover HTML here. Other than to say that this is an HTML page, this is a table object, and this C for each is actually JSTL, which you've imported here and then used down here to render the individual rows and columns of this table. So we break down um, what the different parts of the JSP page are. And the JSTL tag library, a little link here to the HTML tutorial. These things, this dollar sign books, dollar sign book title, dollar sign book price, this is JSP EL, JSP expression language. The books in the servlet, we set this attribute, request set attribute, which puts the books in request scope. 
and then later the JSPEL expression language will look for books. It first looks for books in the page scope. It doesn't find page scope. Then it looks for them in request scope. It doesn't find them in request scope. It goes up to session scope and so on and so forth. Essentially by just putting books here it's going to first see if it's in page scope and then it's going to go to uh, request scope. If we want it to be specific we could have said request scope dot books. Setting up the dependency injection. One of the things to get that at inject work where we inject the repository object into the servlet, we need to create this XML file. It's empty, so it starts, here's the beans element tag. It, you can actually have this completely empty and just have a blank file. The reason why I don't do that is Eclipse starts to complain and moan about the uh, XML being in a bad format. And there's ways to turn that off, but I don't really want that turned off for all the XML. So it gets a little complicated, so it was just easier to give it a blank XML. You can just cut and paste this right off the wiki. We're not going to be doing too much with XML. When you're ready to deploy, you saw you just right click on the servlet, you do the run as, run on server, and then you run it. First time, you'll have to set up resin Essentially, you select resin, then you hit download and install, and it'll install uh, resin on your uh, local machine, and that will be the server. And then from then on out, resin's integrated in with Eclipse. It actually is a very easy process. And then once they're done, you can run that in Eclipse. It's just right click this, run, run as, and then this uh, very first servlet's running uh, in Eclipse. And here's the same servlet, but from Firefox. Here's some instructions for if you're going to deploy from the command line. Basically, you would just have to copy the WAR file to uh, web apps. If you use the standard install for resin on Linux, that's var www web apps. And if you use the Windows install, uh, just copy it where it says its web apps folder is, and it'll run. Here's the tutorials we've worked on. So the next one, we're going to talk about adding the create, read, update, delete to the listing. So some additional servlets, as well as some uh, JSP tag handling. The one after that, we're going to use JSP to create a header, footer area, do some formatting on the prices and dates, and some basic CSS for a bookstore so it doesn't look too vanilla and horrible. Although, I will admit, it doesn't look great. Then we're going to uh, go right into adding uh, MySQL and JDBC support. So how to use JNDI to look up a database connection and start using that database connection, actually look up those books from the database. And then I list these next five or six, but there's actually uh, going to be many, many more slides and slides of these little cookbooks around this same application to show just things that you really run into when you're doing a job web development, like sticky sessions and session replication and memcache and all the tricks of the trade to diagnose performance issues and to make an application that's scalable. So we want to cover a lot of those topics as the series progresses. So I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.